If you're getting ready to prune your trees this fall, wait. There's some things you have to understand before you start making cuts on your tree, before you cause irreversible damage. The trees we plant in our yards are going to require maintenance at some point. However, improper pruning can make a bad situation even worse. Most homeowners prune their trees without a good understanding of how to achieve their objectives while working with the tree biology and tree structure. It's important to know when it comes to tree pruning, there's not a specific formula that's going to work for every tree. It's going to depend on a lot of different factors like tree species, the tree health, age, site conditions, etc. But starting with the foundation of basic tree anatomy and biology, a lot of the issues caused by improper pruning can be avoided and mitigated. In order to make informed decisions when it comes to pruning, we need to go over some technical terms. Now bear with me, I'll explain these terms and how they relate to tree pruning, but it's really important we define these terms before we go ahead and take some pruners to the tree because these are key in how the tree's gonna actually respond to the cuts we make. In this video, we'll be looking at this apple tree that's been growing in this yard for about 10 to 15 years. It's received very little attention over the years and has never been pruned by a professional. So it's a pretty good sample of the type of situation you'll probably run into as a homeowner. Also, it has pretty good examples of the type of conditions that result from improper pruning. First, let's go over the anatomical features of a tree that are most relevant for pruning. First, we have buds. Buds are where the new growth occurs in the tree called the primary growth. And that has to do with the increase of length and height of the tree and branches. There's actually a couple different types of buds we need to talk about. First is the terminal bud, also called the apical bud. And that is the bud that grows at the very end of the twigs and branches. Then we have the smaller buds that grow along the sides of the branches called the lateral or axillary buds. And there's also dormant buds that lay underneath the bark of the branches and the trunk. These are called adventitious buds and they can be triggered when the tree is stressed from things like improper pruning and result in what are called water sprouts, oftentimes referred to as suckers. Where those buds are located are called nodes and the space between the buds are called the internodes. That's important to know because those nodes indicate where new growth is going to occur and can also be an indication of the health and vigor of the tree. When it comes to pruning, we're dealing with what is above the ground. And so we're starting with the trunk. The trunk will then lead into what are called the scaffold branches. And those are the main branches that make up the structure of the tree. Off of these main scaffold branches, we will have what are called lateral branches. And so these are just smaller branches that are coming off of the main branches. So when I'm talking about branching, I'm usually referring to either scaffold branches, which are again, the main branches coming off the trunk, and then lateral branches, or any branch coming off of those main scaffold branches. And then oftentimes those lateral branches even have smaller twigs or branches that I'll just refer to as laterals. And so as far as terminology goes, that's important because usually we are referring to these lateral branches as far as where we place our pruning cuts. On healthy branch attachment, there will be this swollen area called the branch collar, which is basically where the fibers from the trunk or the main branch are interweaving with that lateral branch. Inside the branch, those overlapping wood fibers also create an area called the branch protection zone. That creates a really strong structure, as well as making a physical and chemical barrier that helps prevent the spread of decay. There will also be what's called the branch bark ridge on healthy branches that will be uplifted. On unhealthy attachment, there will be like almost a seam where you can see the bark being pinched between the two leads. If the angle of attachment is too tight and the ratio between the two branches is close to equal, that's gonna be a weak attachment because it's not gonna have overlapping wood fibers and it's not gonna create the branch collar, the branch bark ridge, or the branch protection zone. When this occurs, it's called a co-dominant stem and it's a really weak attachment. It will result in what's called included bark, which is as those two grow, rather than having the wood fibers interconnect, it will instead push the bark in between the two. And as they grow in size, that will become a weak attachment in the tree. And when that attachment does break, it's basically gonna be open access to wood decaying fungi. That leads us to our next important term to define called compartmentalization. Unlike other organisms like animals or fungi, trees don't actually heal. What they do is called compartmentalization, 
which involves chemical and physical barriers that stop the spread of fungi and decay and overall helps protect the tree. Those cuts we make will always be present in the tree. So with that in mind, it's important to remember that with pruning, we don't ever want to cut into that branch collar or into the branch protection zone. We want to keep that intact. Then ideally, when the tree grows, it will be able to completely envelop that wound and block it off so that it never becomes an entry point for decay. The next term that's really important to understand before you start pruning is called apical dominance. The bud at the end of the branch called the apical bud produces a plant hormone called auxin. And one thing auxin does is it inhibits the growth of the lateral branches running along the stem and that helps result in a healthy structure for the tree. Trees are basically fractals. If you don't know what fractals are, think of a pattern that reoccurs in progressively smaller and smaller sizes. Things like rivers and their tributaries and snowflakes are other good examples of fractals. And in trees, what that fractal pattern does where you have you know, the main trunk and then you, the main branches are a reflection of the main trunk and then the smaller branches coming off those main branches are a reflection of those branches. That keeps the ratios in balance so that the tree is able to form these healthy attachments. So when you're pruning, especially young trees, you wanna have a strong central lead with clearly defined scaffold branches. Those are the permanent branches that create the structure of the tree that are 50% or smaller than the diameter of the trunk and then lateral branches coming off of those main scaffold branches that again are either 50% or smaller than the diameter of those lateral branches. There's an important caveat to this which is as a lot of trees mature they will lose this strict apical dominance and have a very open crown. If you look at these big mature trees with broad crowns with healthy branch attachment in mind you can tell that they had good structure established before they started branching out and growing. But it's important to first understand what makes a healthy branch attachment. Because again, if you have large diameter branches that are approximately the same size, that are a tight angle, that is gonna be a really weak attachment. Also, a lot of small trees, like fruit trees, will tend to have a more open crown. And that is just fine. But again, you really wanna keep in mind this principle because it can allow you to train the trees and also spot problematic attachments early. When you remove the apical bud, it changes the flow of auxin in potentially several different ways. One, that flow of auxin and apical dominance can be transferred to a large healthy lateral branch. That's typically the goal when you're doing reduction cuts. You prune back the long tip back to healthy lateral and then the tree is able to grow in healthy ways. However, another response that can be really problematic is when you remove the apical bud, it will trigger the growth of dormant buds that lay underneath the bark along the trunk and the main branches and it will result in the formation of several branches that grow straight towards the light. But these vertical shoots that are clustered together are really weak and result in very poor structure. And as that tree continues to grow larger, they become extremely problematic. As an arborist, a lot of my job with urban trees is mitigating the damage caused by these improper pruning techniques and trying to establish a strong central leader and get healthy structure. Again, that's way easier to do when the tree's young. As the tree gets older, it becomes almost impossible to correct some of these issues. It's hard to overstate how important tree structure is for the long-term health of the tree. And co-dominant stems that result in included bark are by far the main cause of tree failure in otherwise healthy trees. On top of that, very few people know how to properly prune their trees with these principles in mind. So even if they got a high quality tree from the nursery, oftentimes the way they try to manage that tree results in poor structure. And that's one reason why trees in yards and urban areas will have structural issues is that either in the nursery or at some point in the tree's life, it was pruned improperly. Ideally proper pruning will start when the tree is young after the first year or two after the tree is established. The idea behind that is while the tree is young and growing vigorously, you're setting a foundation for healthy growth and structure, and you're making small cuts that the tree is able to heal and compartmentalize easily. If you're waiting till the tree is older and taking larger cuts, there's more of a chance that the tree is going to have structural issues that you can't address, and that those large cuts will lead to the introduction of fungi and lead to the decline of the tree. With these principles of biology and anatomy in mind, we can now evaluate this tree. Almost immediately, it loses a central leader and breaks into three main leads. And sure enough, those co-dominant stems are problematic and have included bark. Now this is a good example of what happens when those structural issues aren't addressed when the tree is really young. Here you have a main trunk that then breaks off into three pretty much equivalent sized trunks. And you can see this attachment here, rather than having a ridge 
of bark and a good angle of attachment. It has a really tight angle and this bark inside here, you can see is indented rather than a ridge. And so that is bark that is being pinched all the way to about here. So you have about two and a half to three inches of included bark on this tree. If we were to take a cross section of this branch here, rather than being round and thick with interlocking fibers, it'd be kind of this loaf shaped cross section that is thinner this way and wider this way. So that really increases the likelihood that this branch will fail in the future. And unfortunately, especially on the small apple tree, this is way too big to actually remove. Moving up the trunk, there are some wounds likely caused from flush cuts where they cut past the branch collar and branch protection zone that have not been able to compartmentalize effectively. This branch attachment here is a good example of something in between. Here we have the ideal healthy attachment with a branch that is a third of the diameter of the branch that's growing off. It has the branch bark ridge, it has the branch collar inside there, it has the branch protection zone. Down here we have the typical included bark with a branch that is over 50% of the diameter of the main stem. And so this is a really weak attachment. This branch here is kind of in between. It's about at that 50% diameter point and it is growing at a pretty tight angle of attachment. However, at this point, it still has a branch bark ridge. You can see it popping out there. However, it is lacking the branch collar here. You don't see that nice swollen area where the wood fibers are overlapping. This tree is advanced enough and is struggling to the degree that we can't fully resolve these issues. My approach to pruning this tree, considering its current condition, would be to remove as little as possible. This would include trying to establish a central lead on the three individual leads, cleaning up the structure a little bit by taking some thinning cuts and reducing some long overextended branches. I hope this video answered some of your questions and helped clarify why understanding tree anatomy and the role of apical dominance in tree growth is really foundational in understanding how to prune your trees. In the next videos, we'll talk about other important considerations to understand before you prune your trees that will help you be really effective in your pruning. If you have any more questions, please let me know so I can factor them into the videos I create in the future. And if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks.